Kamala Harris's teleprompter went out during a campaign event in Flint, Michigan. Honestly, it's hard to tell what malfunctioned worse, the teleprompter or Kamala Harris. According to Newsweek, Kamala Harris gets stuck on repeat and teleprompter glitch. In fact, the international press picked up on this. According to the Times of India, Kamala Harris keeps on repeating herself after teleprompter malfunctions. Now, I want to lead up to this moment. So yesterday in Flint, Michigan, the Harris campaign unveiled what they're calling Athletes for Harris. So they brought out a whole bunch of athletes, including Magic Johnson. We have 32 days that sound familiar? Somebody wore number 32. You know who that is, right? <laughs> Until November 5th. So that's important to keep in mind. Obviously, Magic Johnson is referring to himself. His jersey had the number 32. That was his number. Keep that in mind. That will be important later on. So... Before we get to the teleprompter glitch, I want to show you how Kamala Harris began her speech, just so you can get a sense of the cadence of her speech, the rhythm, and just how comfortable she was on the stage while the teleprompter was working. Starting with the Governor Whitmer, who is amazing, and is my friend, my dear friend, Mayor Neely, Senator Stabenow, Senator Peters, Representative Slocken, who we will elect to the United States Senate. So while the teleprompters are working, you can see her, you know, she's thanking everyone by name, one after the other after the other. Very comfortable, a very strong cadence. And then immediately after that, you know, she's thanked everyone. She wants to bring up Magic Johnson because, like I said, they just launched Athletes for Harris. And you can see the moment. Watch her face closely. You can literally see the moment the teleprompter goes out. Remember his number? 32! Today we got 32 days until the election. <laughs> so 32 days. 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right. 32 days. And we know we will do it. And this is going to be a very tight race until the very end. This is going to be a very tight race until the very end. We are the underdog. And we know we have some hard work ahead. Now, here's the thing. Teleprompters go out all the time. And more politicians have actually handled that situation better than she did. In fact, I want to go backwards to 2008 for a moment. So Sarah Palin, who the left has demonized as being a moron and an idiot, right? Well, Sarah Palin, you know, largely has been credited with one of the best convention acceptance speeches of all time. Her 2008 convention speech even by people who hate her, will admit that that's one of the best convention speeches ever given. Well, during her 2008 convention speech, her teleprompter went out. That was her introduction to the national audience, according to CBS, the Sarah Palin teleprompter saga. It's one of those uh, mythologizing details that can help a well-received speech be remembered as an epic one. And, you know, it was a well-remembered speech. And then when we found out, holy crap, her teleprompter went out, huge news, according to the Wall Street Journal. Palin's teleprompter troubles. Uh, uh, when her moment on the national stage arrived last night, Alaska Governor Sarah Palin had more to contend with with just nerves. The teleprompter that fed her the speech malfunctioned. And one of the most famous lines from the speech, and for those of you who watched the 2008 election cycle, will remember this as one of the most famous lines from that cycle— it was completely ad-libbed. She made it up on the spot when the teleprompter was malfunctioning. And if you pay attention, close attention to this clip, you can actually see her uh, fumbling through papers in front of her, trying to get the written notes to the right place because the teleprompter wasn't working. But again, this joke, this one-liner, completely ad-libbed, completely improvised. You know, they say the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull? Lipstick. <laughs> So 
So again, that's someone who the left, you know, just criticized as being dumb, yet she was able to ad lib. She didn't repeat herself on loop. She didn't get stuck like a broken record. In fact, the timing of this is really coincidental almost because President Trump was just in Michigan. And guess what? His teleprompter also went out. Here is how Trump handled the teleprompter outage. The teleprompter just went out. Just one out. I'm standing here, and I do most of it without the tele. Isn't it nice to have somebody that doesn't need a teleprompter? <laughs> These teleprompters. You know, it's very dangerous. You got to be careful. You know, teleprompters will often go out. And if you're a certain type of person like Joe Biden, what would he do with the teleprompter? He's no good when the teleprompter is on. You know, and again, that joke obviously improvised because the teleprompter wasn't working, as Trump pointed out in front of everyone. So he is quick on his feet. He's able to stay in control of the situation. And that is the thing. When you are president of the United States and you're faced with adversaries, you're faced with setbacks, you're faced with unfolding real-time geopolitical events, there is no script. You are the decision maker. Uh, and, and there's not going to be a teleprompter for you when you get to the Oval Office. So I would rather have someone who is quick on their feet, can handle a moment at any notice, uh, like President Trump, Sarah Palin, uh, and all other politicians who are much more qualified than Kamala Harris. And what really blows my mind about this whole situation is that Kamala Harris gives the exact same speech everywhere she goes. And it's like, how do you not have your lines memorized yet? Take a look at this moment during her speech yesterday in Flint, Michigan. You watched the debate. You watched the debate. You saw that. Now, you'll notice people in uh, yellow above her on screen left, people in red. There was someone in green. Well, so that was in Flint, Michigan. Well, she recited this exact same speech just a few days earlier in North Carolina. Pay attention to the Chiron and you'll notice the crowd behind her is totally different. Oh, you all watched the debate. <laughs> the exact same stump speech, the exact same lines, the exact same jokes, and... <laughs> She doesn't have it memorized yet. Now, I will get back to this. I, I'm going to close the video talking more about this speech, the teleprompter outage. But one of you, um, I, I don't remember who, so forgive me for not remembering your name. But one of you asked me on X, you know, uh, they, you saw a news story about Kamala Harris going on this podcast. It is an explicit podcast uh, for adults. And don't worry, I'm going to try to keep this as family friendly as possible. I know a lot of you leave comments saying that you watch. Uh, one of you recently said you watch with your daughter. You were asking about my dog and cat. Uh, some of you, I know, are couples. You watch as a family. And so I, 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 I'm going to keep this as family friendly as possible. Um, but you saw this story about Kamala Apparently, while the hurricane was hitting, Hurricane Helene was hitting the southeastern U.S. and pummeling the U.S., instead of being focused on relief efforts, you saw this news story about Kamala recording this explicit podcast called Call Her Daddy. And you were like, is this real? This seems too outlandish and insane to even be real. Well, unfortunately, I want to tell you that it is real. According to Axios, Kamala Harris to appear on Call Her Daddy podcast. Vice President Kamala Harris will be a guest on the Call Her Daddy podcast next week. A campaign spokesperson confirmed to Axios on Friday, so yesterday. In fact, the mainstream media, the Hollywood elites, are already salivating over this. So Drew Barrymore uh, called Kamala Harris Mamala. They're like, you know, the idea there was that like Kamala Harris is a mom even though she doesn't have any of her own children. And uh, the country needs a mother. Well, they're already trying to spin that, according to Vulture. Call her Dadala? I, I, you know, they, they want to call her Daddy. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Call Her Daddy, I, I'm, again, I'm going to be very careful here. Um, this is a podcast that is famous for, and you can pause that there if you want, but famous for the Gluck Gluck 9000, which... To put it mildly, is the original hot to a girl. I mean, this is what kind of podcast that is. Uh, very explicit, adult-themed. The reason Kamala Harris is going there is to talk about abortion rights. So she recorded that podcast while Helene was hitting. 
Um, and obviously, the federal government has been slow to respond to Helene. In fact, David Axelrod appeared on uh, – what podcast was it? He appeared on The Clay and Buck Show. And David Axelrod said the private uh, – the quiet part out loud. And – for those of you unfamiliar, David Axelrod was a uh, one of the head advisors for the Obama uh, White House. He w was part of Obama's administration. And this is what he said specifically about Helene and Trump voters and the election. Here's my question about North Carolina. You had these killer storms, which, by the way, was a third big story this week. Yes, these another killer another. storms. And there's a lot of displacement in western North right. Carolina. In, uh, now, Asheville is a blue dot in that area, but there are a lot of Republican say, voters Asheville's there. Key. But yeah. those voters in Asheville are, uh, they're, you know, the kind of voters who will figure out a way to vote. You know, they're upscale kind of liberal voters, and they're, they're probably going to figure out a way to vote. I'm not sure a bunch of these folks who have had their homes and lives destroyed elsewhere in western North Carolina in the mountains there are going to be as easy to um, to 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 wrangle for the Trump campaign. I mean, he said the quiet part out loud, whether or not the federal government is intentionally slow walking this. It, it certainly has the appearance that they're doing that. And whether or not that's politically motivated, you know, we'll hopefully find out in the weeks, months, years to come as, you know, we investigate the quite frankly, just abysmal federal government response to this disaster, especially when we now know that they've been spending millions and billions, not over on over, not only on overseas wars, but also on illegal immigrants. People who have broken the law are here and, you know, they're, they're getting five-star hotels, literally. Illegal migrants are getting five-star hotels. They're getting food. They don't have to show their ID. Meanwhile, victims of Hurricane Helene get a measly one-time $750 stipend from from the federal government. It is a slap in the face. And that's why, you know, the media has been up in arms about this. So yesterday during that press release, that press conference where Joe Biden made an appearance, the press was actually pushing. They were asking questions not only about Hurricane Helene, but in regards to economic data and jobs numbers and all of that. And Karine Jean-Pierre had a moment where she actually snapped at a reporter. By the way, obviously, it's not the first time. Uh, there is no additional context to what I'm about to show you because the entire briefing yesterday was really tense. And um, I, I actually have more commentary. I'll just play this clip and then we'll analyze afterwards. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The numbers are rising according to the USDA. Food insecurity numbers? No, not not right now. Um, I, I I'm 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 not talking to you, sir. Okay. I'm just not. It'd be nice if you would be less disrespectful in the room. I'm just asking questions. Hmm. Inappropriately. No. Okay. Go ahead, Josh. I don't know. If, maybe you guys are done with me. Maybe I can walk out. <laughs> I mean, you can tell she is feeling overwhelmed that the press is actually doing her their job. I think she's probably upset. We know that, you know, when Joe Biden goes out, they often have an order, a pre-approved list of reporters, a pre-approved list of questions. And I wonder, you know, my theory is, was that reporter going out of line uh, in terms of what they pre-approved? And is that why she stopped? Now, going back to this teleprompter saga, if you're still watching... I, and that's why I didn't want to include this earlier in the video, because if you're still watching, you're probably, you know, an avid viewer of the channel, or maybe you just hopefully enjoy the video. Um, but for those of you who've watched the channel for a while, you know that I'm a professional actor and also a professional musician. And as an actor, you know, I, I, I have to go to set. I have to know my lines. I, 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 I mean, that is my job, to know my lines, because the director, the producers, the makeup artists, the, uh, the staff, and the people who work on the set, I mean, everyone there is reliant on the performers being able to do their job. When I perform as a musician with an orchestra, it is my job to not only have my part memorized, but to have the orchestra's part memorized so I can play my piece with them. Now, what does that have to do with all of this? Kamala Harris's job is not only to know her lines. I mean, I, I hate to even put it that way because that minimizes the gravity 
of the responsibility of her job. It is her job to know her policy, to know her agenda, to know her doctrine. And I'm sorry, if your teleprompter goes off, you should be able to talk about, you should be able to give an elevator pitch as to why the American people should elect you should trust you. Uh, you. You should be able to talk extra um, extemporaneously about your qualifications, your experience, your vision for the future. That is literally your job. You are asking for our trust. And I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I have little to no sympathy for a teleprompter going out like that. I, I, I just don't because Madam Vice President, do your job. Do your job right now and if you can't do your job, then why are you asking for a promotion? Why are you asking for a raise? Why are you asking to be elevated, to be, you know, the leader of the free world? I, I, I just don't understand it. But as always, all of that is my analysis and commentary. That is what's going on in the world from my point of view, and I would love to know it uh, from yours. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, are you bothered by this teleprompter saga? Do you think it's funny? Are you amused by it? Are you annoyed? Uh, do you think it matters? I mean, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. If you haven't already, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I know it's a simple thing to ask, but it really does help me in the algorithm to reach more viewers like you. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and to check out one of these videos.